It's funny, I'm, I'm usually, uh, I don't know what to do without a guitar in my hand. <laughs> so I have to hide behind something. Um, such a privilege to bring the word, appreciated wildfire, wild wood, wild wood. Anybody from New Jersey? I always think of Wildwood, New Jersey. No. <laughs> but no, seriously, it was just good to be led in worship. You know, I think we don't get to do that enough. Those of us that week after week are always thinking about set lists and modulations and who's going to be on the team and all these things. You know, it's just so good to just come into a room and be led skillfully, you know, to be led with the right heart and musically prepared and spiritually prepared and it makes it easy for us to connect with the Lord, which while I'm at it, I just think that's a good. First of all, I'm going to ask, if you don't mind, do you, do you like to listen with a pen in your hand? Do you mind if I say that? You don't have to. I can't make you do anything. But if this was a songwriting class, I'd say the first thing is like listen with a pen in your hand or an electronic device that you type with two thumbs or one finger in my case. Because... I just think there's, there's something about, there's an alert, you know, an alertness in our spirit that says, not that I'm going to say anything profound, but I think there's oftentimes a speaker will be saying this, and the Holy Spirit is trying to get your attention about something completely different maybe, and you just get a little flash of insight or epiphany like, oh, and like I said, it may have nothing to do with any words that I say, but just to have that sort of eager anticipation that the Lord can speak to us and he does speak to us and it's just like our phones it's like if we put it in airplane mode then like we're not going to get any texts we're not going to get any emails you know but if, oh okay as long as there are antennas on it's like right right isn't that awesome to think it's actually a perfect analogy that the Lord like has a perfect prescription for each one of us in this room like we don't all lead worship exactly the same way we all have to you know, fashion, depending upon where we lead, who we lead, who, what the demographic is, the generations, etc. right? So I think um, having our, the antenna of our heart on, open, turn on the antenna of my heart, Lord. <laughs> oh, that's not going to work. Um, but you get the point. I, I just think it's that same thing, and you get a little notification, right? The Lord just like, so all that to say, it's good to, uh, I tried to teach my kids that too when, when we would listen to our pastor's sermon, and that's where most of my songwriting, song ideas come from. So anyway, going back to listening with a pen in our hand, active listening, because this has to do with, uh, I do want to talk about how we go from like being a song leader to a, like a worship pastor in a sense. And I want to pick up on where Pastor Brian, you know, he brought us to Exodus last night. We were reading through Exodus and looking how Moses met with the Lord. And face to face, in essence, I mean, God's kind of shielded his direct presence. But Moses spent all that time up on the hill. And if you re keep reading in Exodus, you know the story where he comes down from the mountain. And people, the people were just like, they couldn't even look at his face, right? Do you remember that passage of scripture? They're just like, whoa, whoa. And like, because he had spent all that time with the Lord, like maybe, uh, maybe it was 40 days, or, or I'm not certain, but do you, do you recall where that is, you know? And I always kind of had that hope, like, that I would just spend enough time with the Lord that just maybe, oh, all that time with the Lord, and then maybe I'd walk into Walmart someday, and like, people would be like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> just take it, just take it, we can't, we, just, just, you can have it, we can't look at you. <laughs> I mean, that's an exaggeration, but, but that sense of carrying his name, carrying his presence, we are carry, what does that mean? You know, to carry the name of Jesus, it's, it's much more of an internal thing. It's a spirit thing. It's, it's to be people of presence. And yet I thought, what I want to talk about is, well, how, how do we do that? Like how, what are some practical things that, um, how do we quote unquote, get more of God's presence in our life. Because yes, we have all of him. And yet when we say more, Lord, we're oftentimes, you know, like his omniscient, his omnipresence is in this room. And yet we've all tasted those moments where we've just become more aware of his presence. So I don't know if it's like more of him, but it's more of 
more of our awareness of like his Holy Spirit in the room dealing with us in our hearts and dealing with our congregation sometimes when we're leading. Like those are the moments that we, we pray for, don't we? You know, so it's not just like three fast ones, three slow ones, take an offering, message, then we go eat lunch. Like, man, that's what the old days were like. That was, you know, being a song leader. Turn to page 250, years I spent in vanity, yeah. And that was good. That was fine up till then. But I just think, you know, in the last however many years, 20, 30 years, you know, this, the, the Lord has been pushing us as a church and as those of us that are called to lead in some way. And so that's, that's one thing I'd like to maybe make a note. Instead of song leader, think worship pastor, each one of us. Even if you say, well, I'm, I'm just the bass player. Actually, I'm just a guitar player. It's like, no, every one of these people up here that were leading us in Wildwood, I would encourage them as well. Like, no, you, if you're playing bass, you're, you're pastoring people into the presence of God. Just even what, by your playing, by your preparation, by your heart attitude, uh, by your, you know, just your countenance. You know, it says in Psalms, many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. There is a visual component. You know, we just can't get on a platform and be like, hey, man, what's up? Really had a hard week, guys. Just, I don't know about you, but it was really hard. And uh, I was just thinking maybe we just do a lot of songs in E minor today. And uh, you guys okay with that? <laughs> so anyway, I just wanted to, like as I said, to pick up on how do we sort of actualize this? You know, this idea of carrying his presence it says in Corinthians that he has placed the treasure in jars of clay or earthen vessels, King James says. So he's put the treasure, his presence, his Holy Spirit. Those of us that have called on him, Jesus Christ, as our Lord and Savior. Okay, his Holy Spirit abides in us. He's put treasure in jars of clay with cracks and all. Isn't that amazing? Um, just turn to, turn to somebody and say, you're a jar of clay. I just wanted to do that because I see pastors do that. I just thought, let, let me do that. All right, so how do we actualize this? You know, how does this become? So I was just thinking of other scriptures to just ponder, okay? Words like beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. To behold, that's a powerful word. Even King David said in Psalm 27, um, one thing I ask, one thing I seek is to behold the beauty. Just think about that word behold. We don't do that very often, like to behold, like, like beholding a sunset, if there was a way to just watch the sunset without burning your eye sockets, you know, if, if you had special glasses, you know, but just beholding, you know, uh, if you've ever been to Hawaii or some mountaintop somewhere, you know, and you're just like, wow, this majestic, like this sense of taking it in, beholding a, an ocean as you just watch those waves. So I just think that's a key word for us as worship pastors which I'm going to get to. I want to talk about priests, pastors, and prophets. So, um, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, that reminds me again of when Moses was face to face, you know, he, um, when he descended from the mount. And uh, um, also the Bible says, fix your eyes on Jesus. You know, what does that mean? It says, pray without ceasing. So, this idea of just being people of presence, carrying the presence of God, um, people who worship in spirit and truth, who, who carry, so we carry the name, but more importantly, we carry the presence. We carry him with us. We are jars of clay. We carry his presence. So I want to talk about, this is not my idea, but years ago when I was just a guitar player at a little church in East Texas, um, I was perfectly content to be a guitar player. Um, and uh, one day the pastor, actually, you might know, he's Calvary Chapel pastor, uh, for one year. His name was Albie Pearson. Does anybody happen to know Brother Albie Pearson? God bless him. And he said, I just feel like we should have a time of prayer. Just, I just feel like some of us here just could really use some prayer. We're just going to ask some of our, our prayer team to just come up. And Paul, would you just come up and lead us in a few songs and just kind of lead us in some worship? Well, I'm freaking out. Ah! Like, I don't do that. Like, I wanted to say that. Like, I don't lead worship. I'm in a band. I play guitar. And I'd like, thank you very much. That's, that's just all I want to do. But, you know, what do you do? You're just like, uh, okay. Uh. I don't know what I played, you know. I... <laughs> Maybe just, you know. I love you. 
you, Lord. Eyes so tight, and I lift my voice. And all these voices, loser. <laughs> You'll never work in this town again, Balash. Do you work? Anyway, I was a bit petrified. And, uh, but nonetheless, a few nice people came up afterwards like, hey, man, thanks. that was good. Thanks. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, all right, whatever. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> and then Pastor Alvy again, a couple weeks later, hey, Paul, why don't you think about next week, put a couple songs together, maybe? Thank you, really. I appreciate it, but I'm not, I don't really, like, I'll help with the youth or I'll do this. He's like, no, no, if you do anything, you're a worshiper, brother. You're a worshiper. If you do anything, you should lead worship. And it's just one of those, I am? So note to self, some of us in our middle years, like let's, let's be on the lookout for those teenagers or 20-somethings who we, we sense something on their life in the area of worship or maybe in some other area. And let's just be alert in the spirit to maybe not be, thus saith the Lord. But at the, at the very least, we should at least let them know that, hey, you know, this may be the Lord. May, you know, I'm not certain, but I feel like there's just myself and some others just really feel like there's a God thing on you and uh, the Lord has a special like anointing he has a special favor on your life in the area of worship and uh, not sure what that means but just be diligent be faithful keep doing what you're doing does that make sense so let's let's all make sure we're intentional about this a lot of us in our 30s 40s 50s 60s 70s and if you're in your 20s think of like a teenager that you already can recognize oh yeah so what I want to um so I didn't know what I was going to do. And they said, well, we can't really pay you anything, but there's that closet we could clean out, and you could put a little desk in there, and we'll just get all that junk out. It's near, near the platform, and, and uh, we'll pay you like $50 a week. And uh, at the time, I was living in a mobile home with two kids and <laughs> living in a mobile Living in a van down by the river. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know what that is. Just Google that later. Living in a van down by the river. You'll enjoy that five minutes. Anyway, uh, yeah, so just giving guitar lessons, leading worship. Like, wow, you're going to pay me $50 a week. That's amazing. Awesome to lead worship. Wow. So I, was, I think out of fear of failure, I just began to just study everywhere worship was in the Bible. And so I want us to focus on First Chronicles 16. And you can turn there. I'm just going to, like, fly through this just for time's sake. But I hope you can go back some point later this week when you go home and just really read through first chronicles it's probably been a while perhaps and this is really where god gives david this paradigm for what worship will look like on the earth i mean worship has been happening for all eternity but on the earth it's like build this tent essentially and uh i'm just going to go ahead and read this kind of quickly you can follow along but i'm going to focus primarily on one verse okay first chronicles 16 1 says they they brought the Ark of God, remember, so the Ark of the Lord, remember Raiders of the Lost Ark? Anybody see that? So, you know, that's like the presence of God, you know, the, the Ark of the Lord. We can't go into that study, but it's worth, worthy of a study. So the presence of God, just think about it. the presence of God contained in this, the Ark of God. And they set it inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And they presented burnt offerings, fellowship offerings before God. And David, uh, after David had finished sacrificing the burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. Just like that thought, like, just bless it. God bless you guys. Like, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. That's just a, a cool, um, not a cool, just a good reminder that that's, a, that's, a, that's an appropriate thing for us to do as worship pastors is to bless um, by the way, so worship pastors are finishing that thought. Everybody on the platform, if you think as a pastor that uses music as your primary vehicle, I prefer that as opposed to I'm a worship leader. Again, it's just semantics. It's okay to say worship leader. But I just, I just want us to just ponder that over the next few weeks and months. That like we need pastors. Ephesians, it says there are apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, and pastors. So I think we all probably fit more, most likely, in that pastor category, and we, we use music as our, one of our primary vehicles, music, scripture, prayers. But I, I prefer to think of it that way, and I want us to just kind of 
ponder that, that the Lord is looking for pastors, under shepherds, people who have a heart. A pastor implies um, a care for the people and not like just like this is a gig, you know. This is like I'm a music, I'm a music guy and I got my cool pedals. And I got my skinny jeans and, and man, I just learned like a couple like top CCLI songs and I'm ready, man. Like... And I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not mocking anyone. I'm just saying, you know, that's just in our immaturity. You know, we start somewhere. But let's get to a place where we, we just begin to take on this, what the Lord wants from us is to love people, to pastor them, to, to get them in our hearts. And I, I want to talk about one or, one or two ways that we can do that, like a practical way. So, all right, so verse 3, then he gave a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, and a cake of raisins to each Israelite man and woman. That's pretty cool. It's like food. Food's always a good thing. Um, all right, verse 4, I want to focus. Then he appointed some of the Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord, to extol, thank, and praise the Lord, the God of Israel. Now I'm going to read several. I have Bible Hub here right now. I'm just going to read a couple different translations. and Because just get this picture of this was their job. This is... In a sense, we, if you're called to worship ministry, to lead others in worship, then our first and primary role is to be like a Levite, to be a priest, to, to operate or function in our priestly role, if you will. And here it is right here. It's laid out for us. Before we ever step on a platform and say good morning as a pastor, you know, like before that, there's this step. And I think we, we kind of miss this. And I think this is how we can begin to sort of this beholding, this fixing our eyes, just um, spending time. Uh, we did that a little bit this morning, just corporately, you know, just, just during worship. But I want to just talk about this. This is happening. There's not a lot of people here. There's no, this isn't an outer court or inner court. This is like a real intimate thing. So he appointed the Levites. So to give thanks, praise the Lord, to extol uh, here's another one says to give thanks and to praise the Lord and to invoke his blessings. That's a good one. To invoke his blessings. It's always three here. All these translations. This one says uh, to invoke, to thank, and to praise the Lord. To celebrate and to thank and praise the Lord. King James says and to, uh, to thank and praise the Lord God of Israel. Um, you with me? This is good. He says to minister continually. He appointed some of the, uh, the descendants of Levi to minister continually by remembering, giving thanks, and praising the Lord. Isn't that cool? So remembering is an act of worship. Remembering, helping people remember. That's a big part of our job is to remind people of who God is and what he's done. Right? So in our songs, in, our, in, our, in between songs, maybe briefly, a little encouragements, exhortations. So... Um, so you're with me. I love this. Offering prayers. There's another one here. It says um, they would minister before the ark of the Lord, offering prayers, thanks, and praise to God. And there's another one that says to, uh, to give thanks, to praise the Lord, and pray petitions. So I really want to focus on that. So what does that mean? I just remember being a mid-20s guy, you know, 26, 27, and just like, Saying, Lord, worship, like out of fear of failure. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to do this wrong. I don't want to, you know, so I just thought, what does that look like? So, uh, so for 26 years, the last 26 years, uh, my wife and I were in the same church, the same neighborhood, same, you know, everything. We were just there in Lindale, Texas, if you know where that is. And uh, it was just sweet, sweet to just go through, to just pick a group of people and say, this is it. We're going to do life with these people, you know. It's because for years we were like this church and that church. Well, we kind of don't like the preaching there, but we like the worship over here and we like this. And the, finally, it was just like, boom, this is it. We're just going to, these are the people we're going to do life with. And um, so going back to those early days, I would go into the sanctuary. And this is a, an exercise, if you will. I don't, you could call it a spiritual discipline, but I just call it, I, this is what the Bible, this is our first and primary role as worship pastors. Everybody say amen. Are you with me? I don't want to be insecure. I'm just like, are you with me? Can I get an amen? 
feeling really insecure because you're so quiet. No. <laughs> I need some kind of response for my sake. No, I'm kidding. Don't we do that, though? It's like, uh, we kind of do that sometimes, don't we? And then we realize, ah, oh, sorry, Lord. It's okay. You don't always need a response. All right, so I'm just going to try... Just hang in there with me. So what I started doing is, okay, well, they would go into the sanctuary, to the tent, and then which became the temple eventually. But they would give thanks, they would praise the Lord, and they would uh, pray petitions or pronounce blessing over the people. We we made a list of some of those and different translations. So I thought, okay, those those three primary things. So okay, um, so for so personally. I just started like, going out into the sanctuary, turning on the PA, had my guitar. Maybe you're a piano player. If, if you're not, have somebody show you where like middle C is, you know, on the piano, ding, 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 ding. And it's just good that because da, 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 Because what I'm going to ask you to do is sing unto the Lord. A little bit, okay? So if you don't play an instrument, at least find out where middle C is, and that's enough to do what I'm going about to describe here. So imagine you, as I'm talking about this, maybe you're just like peeking in the window. You're like, what's, what's Balazs doing? You know, that's, that's weird. It's only Tuesday morning. It's 10 o'clock. What's he doing? There's nobody in. Is it a prayer meeting going on? What's going on? Oh, no, no. I think he's just there by himself. So I would have my Bible open to the Psalms. Um, Psalms are the vocabulary of worship if we want to expand our language you know when you're two when a, a two-year-old that can say mama dad dad no, like that's sweet but by the time he's 17 hope he's got a little bit more of a vocabulary you know hope he can speak in complete sentences so even spiritually some of us you know the, 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 the vocabulary of worship is right there in the Psalms that's the place to start there's many other places but let's that's the primary uh, Spot. So, open up to the Psalms. Um, you could use King James, whatever. I like the NIV, at least for a season. There's a little bit of a lyrical thing about some of those verses. Then I'd open up my journal. You know, my journal. always got a journal going with some maybe song ideas, some titles, some teachings that I maybe, you know, even last night as Pastor Brian was teaching, just writing down some, some of these phrases that, and places in Scripture. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's good, that's good. So I'd have that. I'd also have maybe a list, what I would call a master song list. Songs that um, we're kind of in the last year been doing at our church. So kind of have a, go ahead and print one of those out. Right? And just kind of have, you know, you update it. Maybe you drop some songs. Occasionally you add some. But does that make sense? A master song list? You get what that is? Just basically so you can look down and kind of, oh, yeah, yeah, all right, right, uh-huh. And then the other, th one other thing, which I'll talk about later, is in our little church, we had a church directory. It sounds so old school, but where like once a year we'd get pictures of families and the kids, you know. And then five years later, we all look so silly, you know, the haircuts and stuff. But have you, you know what I'm talking about, a church directory? So, but that's more the pastoral thing. But I used to just like to have that there, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But first and foremost, this is all about... Okay, a little bit awkward at first. I'm not sure how to do this, Lord, but it says uh, the Levites would come into your presence and um, to give thanks. So um, um, I give thanks. I want to praise you. Uh, so I open up to maybe Psalm 92. Um, let's see. Uh, and I just read out loud. Uh, and there's something. I'll tell you why in a minute. You're like, well, why? You can do this, of course, in your living room, your, your kitchen, anywhere. But there's something... If you have the, the privilege, the opportunity to do it in the sanctuary, to be in this physical place, and you do this over and over, it'll start to, uh, I'll get to this in a minute, but it, there's a, over time, you're just ministering to the Lord, but there's like a spiritual uh, ownership somewhat. Like you start to just, there's something, you just get used to being in this place by yourself, you and the Lord, and you're just sort of... Uh, Psalm 92, it is good to praise you, Lord, and make music to your name, O Most High, uh, to proclaim your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. That's a good scripture. Wow, yeah, it is good. It is good to praise you, Lord. It is good to praise you, Lord, and make music to your name. So I just read that out again. And so here's a practical thing I'm going to suggest, and then I'm just going to, like, pretend you're not here and, and do it for a minute or two. 
And that is, I like to sing psalms, sing some psalms, like put a, put a simple melody to a psalm, and then pray songs. So take some of these familiar songs, these lyrics, and pray those lyrics. So instead of singing them, just kind of try to, over time, memorize a couple songs a week where you don't, you know, just wean yourself from song books and, and lyrics and just kind of try to memorize some of these. So it's a combination of, like, singing psalms instead of reading them. Like, you're speaking the word of God out loud. You're singing that song out loud. You know, Psalm 27 um, we just said, what is it? Uh, one thing I ask, one thing I seek, to behold your beauty. One thing I ask, one thing I seek, to behold your beauty. Beauty of your holiness. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you, Lord. I just come before you with a grateful heart. According to your word, I just come into your presence with thanksgiving, just giving you thanks that your mercies are new this morning. You said I could come boldly, I could come with confidence, as in Hebrews, I could come with assurance into your presence. So as I come to you now the best I know how, and I'm just sing your word back to you. Um, open Psalms, let's see, uh, Psalm 92. It is good to praise you, Lord. It is good to praise you, Lord. And make music to your name, O oh, Most High. It is good to praise you, Lord. And make music to your name, O oh, Most High. Almost high. Ah. Mm. And maybe I look down at the song list. Maybe I've, I just sing that psalm for a little bit. A little bit more. Oh, I didn't look at the second verse. Uh, to proclaim, uh, to proclaim your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night to proclaim your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night it is good to praise you Lord it is good to praise you Lord most high. So with a childlike heart, Lord, just help me to soften my heart towards you, Lord. I just pray you uh, give you a heart of stone for a heart of flesh, as your word says. Just soften my heart. Give me clean hands and a pure heart. I just want to sing your word back to you and Lord, when the music fades and all is stripped away, and I just simply come, longing just to bring something that's of worth, something that will bless your heart, I want to bring you more than a song, because a song in itself is not what you require. You search much deeper within. You're looking through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. So help me come back. Help me, Lord. Come back to a heart of worship. Because it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Help me, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord, for this thing I've made it. Sorry just for how busy. Just become a busy, busy thing. Just like such a Martha thing. I want to be more like Mary. Jesus, when you said to Mary, Mary has chosen the better part. Lord, help me. I just, I just want to learn how to do that, Lord. Just to be at your feet. Mm. Over the mountains and the sea, your river runs with love for me. 
So I open up my heart and say, Holy Spirit, set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth. And I just lift my hands to you today. And I will always sing and remember of when your love came down. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. You're my soul's glory, joy, and crown. You're my soul's glory, joy, and crown. You're my soul's glory, joy, and crown, fairest Lord Jesus. So just for a minute, pretend like 20 minutes have just gone by. So just put yourself in my shoes and in your style, your personality, just imagine you just looking at familiar choruses and uh, trying to, maybe you're looking at the lyric and you just turn away for a minute and try to see if you can get through a, like a, a verse one and just get that in your heart, you know, hiding God's word in our heart, it says, or let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. It says in Colossians 3.16, let the word of Christ dwell in us. So you kind of see what's going on here, kind of taking a psalm. Uh, maybe I take, like, see, Psalm 103. And you're not trying to write a song, and you're, you're, you know, you're not self-conscious because you're not performing for everyone. If your melody comes out kind of stupid, it's okay. Because you're just like, all this, this is all about just trying to get your own heart going vertical towards the Lord so that when you step out on Sunday morning and you look out at these people at your congregation, you don't feel like you're faking it, you know. You know, you, you know at least you've, you're making an attempt to try to do this privately. And I think worship leading at its best is when we do publicly, like it's an overflow of what we're doing privately. And I'm just trying to give you a little bit of a picture of like, maybe try this, try like according to... Chronicles, like maybe this is something that has helped me for years. Keep it from just becoming a job, you know. Keep this just becoming from another thing on my to-do list. But no, no, this is this will transform. It's got to start with us. We want to see God doing something new and fresh in our congregation. It has to start with us, I think, you know. So are we willing to go first? Like in the Old Testament, they the musicians even went out before the the army. Wow crazy. All right, you guys, you guys have all the, the, the spears and the arrows, and I'm going out there with my horn. You know, like, and my lute, you know. But, you know, to me, there's a picture there. Like, are we willing to go first? Are we willing to at least try? And so I'm saying, um, I'm trying to just draw a picture, if you will, and just like, try this. And there's just some things that will start to happen. Just, you know, for, for one, the main, the most important thing is you're fulfilling your destiny, our destiny, which is we were created for his pleasure, right? We were created for his pleasure, not just to do whatever we want. So all things were created for his pleasure near the end of the book of Revelation. So, so okay. And then Jesus said in the book of Revelation, you know, I see your perseverance. I see your hard work. Man, you guys are awesome. I see you got planning center, you got rehearsals, practicing your scales, man, you know, forgive me, I'm paraphrasing, but in essence, but he's like, but I, I have this, you know, this is, I have this against you, I just, you, you've left your first love, you know, and I don't see that as a big, like, heavy condemnation, it's just more of like, man, almost in a, in a, in a healthy marriage, you know, maybe where a couple at some point along the way goes, you know, I kind of miss that our connection, like right now we're just kind of in a busy season and you're running the kids to soccer practice and you're working a lot of extra hours and and I'm doing this and I'm a volunteer for this, but I, I'm, I'm kind of missing just our thing, babe, you know what I mean? So that's something, a, a good marriage. So, and, and it's okay to use marriage as a word picture. The Apostle Paul said, you know, we're, we're the bride and he is the bridegroom. So, so just kind of ponder that word picture next week. So, Another quick word picture, there was a book called Tuesdays with Maury. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You ever heard or read of that book? I'm not trying to sell any books for this guy. But it was ten, maybe 10 years ago, but it was an older man that had a terminal disease and he only had six months to live maybe. And man, there was a young guy that just so loved this old man and just wanted to spend as much time as he could. 
And so the book is about every Tuesday they would meet either for coffee or they'd meet in a park somewhere and they just wanted to spend time. And as I read that book, I just had that picture of like, man, are we willing to spend like Tuesdays with the Lord, Thursday afternoon? Are we willing to just find some time during the week where we can come before the Lord and, and kind of practice his presence? This is like practicing the presence of God. This is Moses coming into his presence. This is David out in the field, no people around, way before David was writing songs and leading the people of Israel. There he was, you know, tending sheep and just saying... As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longs after thee, O oh God. Sometimes I'm lonely, why so downcast, O oh my soul? Come on, come on, put your hope in God. Come on, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Lord, you know, so you see what I mean? We're singing psalms, praying lyrics. I wish we could... Um, just do this for another hour like and so maybe do this for an hour and like I'm not promising don't expect immediately goosebumps or a mighty rushing wind I'm saying just but I know that God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble and I know if you just with humility just try to practice this at least once a week at first just, just and like I said, in the beginning, you may not be sure. Okay, just I'm going to do this. Let's see. Uh, here's, a, here's one. Uh, let's see. Uh, I come into your presence with thanksgiving. Just read the psalm. Oh, uh, Psalm 8. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name. Oh, our Lord. Oh, our Lord, how majestic. Dick is your name in all the earth. And um, so, and then go ahead and pray a lyric. So, does everybody kind of get the, at least a snapshot of what I'm talking about? All right, so then a couple things will happen. So, again, don't do this for any, just do it out of a pure heart. Lord, I'm not here to get anything. I'm not here to get a song idea. I'm not here, I'm just here because I want to I wanna practice what Mary did. I want to get, I want to see why. I want to see why you said this is important. I want to see, I want to experience, I want to taste and see that for myself. And so, but here are some things that will, so we give thanks, we praise the Lord. And then the third thing is praying prayers of petition or praying blessing over the people. It said, David said he prayed blessing. So this is what I've done for years and it just was helpful to me. I would just look at my congregation, which would maybe be about this size, actually, you know, and, and I'd look at empty seats that are, I think of the couple that always sits there in the third row, and in the family there, they have seven kids, and they homeschool, and, you know, just such a sweet family, you know, the Forneys, Lord, thank you for Bert and Patty, just thank you for their hearts to serve you, and uh, just pray you help him, uh, he just lost his job, Lord, to just pray provision for Bert. And I just pray you encourage him, Lord. Don't let him be discouraged this week. And uh, I think of that uh, couple that's been married 45 years, and they're going through, one's going through some cancer treatments right now. But, man, Lord, I just pray for Judd and Diane. I just thank you how faithful they've been all these years. And um, I just pray, God, for healing. I just cry out again. I just knock on heaven's door and say, Lord, I just pray for healing, Jesus. I pray for Tony. Maybe, you know, the kid that was 10 years old, he was in the little uh, youth group, and such a sweet kid. Now he's 18, just really going through a hard time, really rebellious, really not into this church thing. I don't even, you know, he kind of shows up in the back with his arms folded, and he's just like, whatever. And so I just say, Lord, I just pray for Tony back there. Just, Lord, I just, so right now, would you do that for a minute? Just 30, no one's going to touch you or anything. Just close your eyes. Or I just... I'm just saying, close your eyes. Just think about, you're on your platform. Look out at your church for a moment. And just look at some faces. They're not just, they're not an audience. They're not a congregation. They're your, they're your family. And you're like, you're an aunt and an uncle to these people. You're an aunt, an uncle, a cousin. You're a family. This is your spiritual family. And Lord, break our hearts for the people we serve, Lord. And go ahead, and each one of us in this room, take a moment and just picture a few names, picture some faces, look on the left side of the congregation, look down the center, somewhere in the middle. 
that family, that couple, that teenager. And just begin to pray, Lord, break my heart. Break my heart. Give me your heart. When you looked over Jerusalem, it says Jesus wept. Would you give me that heart for the people that I serve? Because I am not there. Lord, would you soften my heart? Would you help me to forgive those that I've been annoyed at? Because they don't sing like I wish they would and they don't participate. Lord, I just let that go right now. I just let it go. And would you... Break my heart for what breaks yours. Everything I am for your kingdom's cause. Show me how to love like you love me. So you get that. So imagine just, you know, just for time's sake, just kind of hang there for a bit and spend five, ten minutes each week at, towards the tail end after you've spent some time just trying to minister to the Lord through scripture, through lyrics. And just, there's no rigid formula. If your heart just wants to sing a new song to the Lord, let it go, let it go. Lift up your heart to Him. You're not performing for anyone. You're just lifting up your heart to the King of Kings, to the lover of our soul. Lover of our soul, I love you, Lord. You know, you're just, again, it's just taking that time to do that. I just, as the Apostle Paul would say, I beseech you by the mercies of God to try this. And as you do this, what you'll find is uh, if you do it next week, and then you do it the week after, and then the third week, there will come a time, and this is what's beautiful, is you can't buy this. You can't buy this exchange. Bill Gates, Zuckerberg, all the money in the world, you can't bargain with the Lord. It's, it's a humility exchange. It's, it's a here I am, Lord, exchange. It's like we don't know, but I just promise this, that the Lord is faithful. And as we show up, just showing up, and we just come before him, and we just humbly try to sing a scripture. We sing some scriptures. And, Pray out some prayers, and then there will come moments where you're, you really are just moved by his Holy Spirit. You will experience. You will. You will. And yet, it's, it's up to him. You will experience favor. We, we use words like anointing, favor, blessing, you know, just whatever word that, um, and authority in a sense. You'll, you'll start to over time, you'll be on the platform with your team, and it all looks the same, but something's different. And it's because as we start to practice this ourselves first, and then maybe after we get going a little bit, remember Jesus said, when ye pray, King James, go into your closet and pray to your father who is in secret. You know, so you pray to your father in secret, and then he will reward you openly. You know what I'm saying? So this is like all about if we're going to get on a platform week after week, and there's, I, I miss weeks. Don't make it another legalistic thing in your life, but just, just make an attempt. Make an attempt, you know? If, if, if somebody like Paul McCartney said to you right now, hey, I, I got, next week I'm going to be in Southern California. Love to grab lunch with you if you've got a couple hours, or whoever your, you know, one of your heroes might be, right? Just feel, well, here's, here's the Lord, you know, not to be cute or quaint, but really, are we willing to, do we believe in the invisible God, invisible, immortal, omniscient, omnipresent, you know? Are we willing to, like, take the words of David and try to get his heart into our heart and say, Lord, I want to be like Mary. I want to press into you. I want to love your presence. I said Wildwood sang this morning. Um, that was... Um, Anyway, do you, do you guys hear what I'm saying? So here's some of the byproducts. Is first, first of all, you're going to be personally transformed. You'll just start to feel more relaxed. And uh, when you step on the platform, you won't be pre preoccupied with, you know, what if my string breaks? What if I sing out of tune? It's like, you know, you've just, if it's familiar. You've, you've made this like familiar ground, holy ground, if you will, right? So when you come out and then all of a sudden you see those people are in the seats now. Isn't that cool? And you're thinking in your head, now I don't ever say this, hey, hey, Tony, I was praying for you this week, buddy. I know you're going through a really hard time, man. Like, don't say that. 
But I may just make quick eye contact, you know, if I happen to notice him as I'm, we just come out on the platform for a minute. And, and I, if we make a over the mic, I'm going to say, hey, Tony, good to see you, bro. It's real subtle, but it's just, I want all the teenagers and kids in our church, when they grow up, to know that when they go to college and they try to get talked out of their faith, I want them to go, you know, it's funny, because my church, I always felt like people cared about me. I always felt like they knew my name, you know, that's what that directory is about. If you don't have a photo directory, then make something that's similar, but you should have the names of the people in your church, and you should be aware of, like, when a new couple's been coming for a couple weeks, or just make a note, huh? Okay, I'm going to, in your head, you're like, I'm going to try to, maybe after service, try to accidentally bump into them and be like, hey, how you doing? You guys, uh, I've seen your face a little few times. You've been coming here a couple weeks or, oh, where are you from? And just be genuinely interested, not a technique. But again, if we're going to pastor people, we've got to carry people in our hearts through the week and know a little bit of their story, know some of their struggles, know some of their challenges, so that when we sing, uh, <clears throat> you know, you know, um, blessed be your name, what I found in the desert place. Na, na, na. You know, you're thinking, yeah, I know they're going through a desert place. Yeah, and I just think of people. So that's, that's again, you're carrying, you're shepherding, you're loving. And so that doesn't come naturally. That's a gift that the Lord will bestow on us as we spend time and as we just pray. God, I, I wish I want to have a, a, a tender heart towards even the the most difficult. So a few other byproducts as we spend time in with the Lord like this is occasionally, you know, as you're memorizing scripture and songs, you'll come out of a song, uh, maybe blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed, um, blessed be your glorious name. Oh, we bless your name, Lord. Bless your name, Lord. Proverbs 18 says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are saved. Lord, we run to your name this morning. And then there's a part of you that goes, hey, that was pretty good. <laughs> how did you, where'd you, how did you think of that? And you didn't, but it's because three months ago when you were like going through Psalms and Proverbs and you're singing, oh, and you're memorizing some lyrics, you're like, oh, okay. And the Lord will just pull these scriptures out because you've hidden them in your heart. You're letting the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And so, so worship leading becomes a bit more out of the overflow of our, of our quiet time. You know, that's the secret, you know, to sound like a corny cliche, but it's not. You know, the secret to leading worship is like to find that secret place. Get in that closet. Get in that time. Take First Chronicles you know, and again, try practice this, and maybe then add a, a, a someone else, maybe someone else from your team that has a, a kindred spirit, a similar heart, and say, hey, I've been doing this thing lately where I'm just reading psalms out loud, like read a whole psalm out loud over the microphone, and then maybe zero in on one or two, like go back to the one particular verse that really stands out to you, and then, and either maybe find just a chord, and there's, oh, I will sing this psalm to you, oh God, Psalm 103, uh, um, yeah, I won't do it anymore. You get the idea. You get the idea. Um, um, but I do. I just beseech you. All this is so important. So that's the priestly role, which then it's our pastoral role. We just cultivate this a love for the people we serve over time, like a little bit more. We may not always like them all the time, but like we're, we're, we're getting God's heart for them. And then the, the prophetic thing is simply just... We cultivate a sensitivity to his, his voice in our hearts. So that's all I mean by that. I don't, don't mean you're going to get up on a Sunday morning and have, you're going to foretell the future prophetically. I mean f prophetic in the sense that as we spend time with the Lord, we become a little bit more sensitive to his still small voice. And we get a little bit more, you know, we get like a spiritual hunch. You know, you're in the midst of worship between song number four and five. And... And right before you're about to move on to the next song, there's something in you that just says, wait, 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 just, just wait a second. Wait a minute. And you just take a risk and you hang and you hang there and you just go, hey, before we move on, let's just sing that bridge one more time together. Um, Every blessing you pour out. Uh, that seems like a, a simple thing, but do you, do, you, do you get what I'm saying? Have you ever experienced even a tiny bit of that where you had a sense of like, I think the Lord's kind of, I felt like the Lord was saying we should go to that song. Or I felt like the Lord was saying, and we never know fully until we're in the past tense. Then we look back and go, 
ah, that was the Lord. I feel like that was the Lord. And it's exciting to think. I felt like, you know, I felt like I sensed the Lord saying, kind of just linger for another minute. Or it starts with little, that's like baby steps, but it's like learning Spanish or French. You know, you start off, we learn the, the language of his spirit, if you will. And we, those spiritual hunches, you know, that's what he wants for us. I, that's why he sent his Holy Spirit. It's, it's, it's expedient that I go away so I can send the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the counselor, and he will lead you and guide you and teach you in all things. So the Holy Spirit wants to sort of, each one of us is going to do worship a little bit differently each Sunday. So there's not like one size fits all. But, but I feel like this, this principle, this idea is something that fits all of us, and that is ministry to the Lord cultivating that pastoral heart for the people we serve and just hungering for the ability to just prophetically like discern a little bit more of those that still small voice and taking a little risk once in a while and sometimes it's like whoops that probably wasn't the lord and that's okay you know but it's better than just like you know shutting our eyes and ears and being like no i'm just going to play it safe and i'm going to lead three fast ones and three slow ones man we're we're, we're way past that we need the presence of the lord and if we're going to carry his name, we have to carry his presence. And the only way to carry his presence is to spend time beholding him, fixing our eyes on him, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. We are transformed from glory to glory. Amen. So I will, uh, I will pray. I'm just going to, where's the Wildwood guys? And just that one chorus as we close. I, I want to make sure we have time for a break. Know our session, but just that, would you, what was that song? We love your presence, we love your presence. And we sang her, let's stand up together. We're just going to sing that short chorus, not long, then we'll take a break. And uh, Lord, help us. Lord, we just cry, cry out for, ruin us for anything less than what your word says, to meet with you and that hunger for your presence. And Tree, would just go ahead and lead us in that prayer.